Hello, Tom Lavecki here with the latest edition of the New Theory Podcast. Today we got a fellow Jerseyan. Earlier today we had Jack Lynn and Jack Lee DeAngelis, Fox Business um, correspondent, has her own show. She was on a podcast earlier today. So we have another fellow Jerseyan on. He is half of the Good Tunes Music Podcast. What is Good Tunes Music Podcast? It is a music-centric comedy podcast with hopes Timothy, Tim Montavo and Roger Y. They look at newly discovered jams, interview local Jersey bands, and tell their stories and tales. Tim or Timothy? What do you like to go by? Tim. Tim? Welcome yeah, to yeah. New- <laughs> welcome, to- welcome to the New Theory Podcast. How are you doing today? Great, great. Thanks for having me. All right. So first, let's get into it. So I have... <laughs> I have a podcast now, three years. Labor of Love. Why start a podcast? Um, I've always wanted to do it. I really got into it these last uh, handful of years. Um, I really got into, like, uh, the comedians doing the podcast, like Bobby Lee, Andrew Santino, yeah. Bad Friends, Tiger Belly, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so I got obsessed with those guys, and I always watch the YouTube videos over listening. I'm, I'm, I'm a very visual person. Yeah. So I... I've been wanting to do it. I the idiot Bosch channel that I made on YouTube. I did that a couple years ago. I think I did that started in 2017, um, and I had branded Good Tunes because my handle on Instagram is Timmy Good Tunes, and that was just like oh, a wow. throwaway thing. Yeah, that was just like a throwaway thing uh, years ago that w- someone that I worked with found out that I sang in bands and stuff like that. And she was like, "Oh, look, it's Timmy Good Tunes." I was like, "Oh, okay." And then the Instagram came ar- came along. I was like, "Yeah, hey, yeah, that's a good handle." So okay. kind of just yeah, I kind of just you know kept that brand, I guess. Um, okay. Yeah, and then the the pandemic hit, the lockdown. I was in the events industry, large scale Ooh, events, yikes. doing like yeah, video booths, photo booth, interactive activations for like Netflix and Adidas and like big scale events, stuff like that. Oh wow! So, yeah, so we were the industry that was cut, <laughs> you know. So um, I had a lot of time on my hands, to say the least. Uh, but also at the same time, um, you know, there's a there's a little bit light at the end of the tunnel. My my parents. Um, who have a, a house in Freehold's where I am right now. Yeah. Um, my, my dad's job was moving to Florida and he was going to work there for like a year anyway, but keep the house here and then, you know, yeah. retire after that year, you know, something fun, live in Florida for a year, you know, go for it. Yeah. Um, and I was like, well, this thing kind of just hit and I can't pay rent anymore. So you got an empty house. Here I come. <laughs> you know? I love it. I love it. So, so this is our first squatter on the podcast. I love there it. There it is. I proudly, proudly. <laughs> My mommy so, loves me and I don't care. <laughs> I love it. Oh, listen, like I, you know, I, uh, Italian Americans, we, we stay home late. It just happens. Part, it's part of the culture. So it's like I was, you know, my 20s and people would be like, well, you live home with your mom. You know, what do you tell women? I'm like, I have a 70, 72 year old roommate. Uh, but I didn't stay home to 28 and I would have still stayed home if I could. So I, I get it. Shit, especially, you know, with the pandemic and everything else going on. So so your background, right, Tim? Uh, are you comedian, band, both? Walk us through it. Oh, uh, I mean, um, uh... I can count on my on my hand the amount of time someone growing up or like meeting and stuff joking around with has told me I should be on SNL. So there's that. I mean, and then there's this, my love for music. I got my love for music from my dad. He was always singing while me and my brother were trying to fall asleep. He's just in the hallway ironing his clothes for the next day. Cool. We're just like singing his Spanish tunes. My family's from Ecuador, so oh you wow, know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my so my, my fiance is from Ecuador. What you know? A part of there Ecuador. You go. Yeah, uh, we got family in Quito. We got family in Manta, wow. you know, wow. all around. Wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> they're everywhere. Well, I have a little salchi, <laughs> I have a little salchi papa. We're good to go. All right, I get it. I get it. All right, there you go. so so now I like even more. All right, so <laughs> so you know you're in lockdown. You're squatting. You start the you start the podcast. Yeah, and you got a good vibe to it and and it's funny because tim and i are working on some stuff so he, number one i'm gonna put a link below in the comments we're gonna drive you to his youtube channel please go and support like subscribe share give it the same courtesy you give me and i'm thankful for you let's let's show them what we got and i'm excited about that uh but my question to you though is um like you have really high production value you have a good like these cool guys hanging on the band i still got to catch up more but what yeah. i saw i like i like the vibe so how do you pick your content strategy 
or your strategy is having the strategy, but I just like the vibe. So walk us through how you set up the podcast. Um, I mean, I never wanted to go into it alone. I knew I wanted somebody I needed to feed off of with. There's only yeah. so much I can do. Like I can probably keep it going for a little bit, but, Correct. and I know Roger, we've been in bands since we were 18 together. We've got a lot of stories. Correct. You know, we, we've been in like five bands together. Uh, and he was the perfect one. Cause he's, we very much get along, but on face value, he's this big, huge dude who loves football and stuff. And it's the exact opposite like music is the thing that brought us together you know yeah. so he's the exact opposite that i would kind of think to team myself up but, but i think we got a good he's the very like he yells and he's aggressive and he you know he's that bro type of throw you around you know he's that guy but <laughs> you know i love him i love him to death and i think we have this good rapport we got this good back and forth we like to dig at each other a little bit but we also know what not to what button buttons not to push you know <laughs> so um he was my guy, especially with music. He's the one, number one, the only person I text when I'm like, oh, man, I just found out this new band. You know, he's that guy. So now, so it seems like you're like doing new, new bands, newer bands on the common, yeah. that kind of stuff, which I love because you're kind of helping out like some of those younger players get out there. I think it's harder to get discovered. I know they say social media makes it easier. Mm -hmm. well, not necessarily because just because you put on SoundCloud doesn't mean you, you get the awareness. But let's first start out by your appetite and your interest in music. What are some of the bands that you like? What are some of your favorite Jersey bands? Ooh, um, Jersey bands. I mean, I mean, saying, I mean, the only one that, th that comes to mind now, I mean, as far as well, who are bringing on the, the good on the good scene, it's everybody that, like you saying, we're, we're, we're supporting uh, uh, the younger ties. But to be honest, it's people that we've known throughout the years, at least so okay. far. Okay. Yeah, at least one person in each thing. I think the youngest people we've had on there, uh, which is a couple years younger than us, but we only brought them on because we were in a band with one of their brothers okay. at the time or something like that. So you're getting so, old, basically. Yeah, so we're sort of like, hey, we're still relevant. We're still cool <laughs> kids. We're hip and, and jive. <laughs> I love you. You're Dating myself, I guess. <laughs> so so hold on but hold on but let, let's go legacy first so we have a reference then we'll go back to some of the newer, oh, okay. newer folks who are some of the more popular jersey bands that you like growing up that were jersey based or from jersey because you know how it works once you get super big unless you're I mean, bruce or bon jovi you forget in the jersey but who are some of your yeah. jersey originated bands well it's easy to say those names you know i mean the yeah. people we're gonna i'm gonna bring up are people you probably never i don't even know if you heard of like really That's hardcore right. bands like oh my god let's see we played with a, shade, a band called Shades of Decay. Okay. We played with a band called, uh, or we I went to school with a, people in a band called Nag Hammadi. Oh, cool. You ever heard of them? No. So you're like, oh, yeah. Eric, okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like when people are, you know, I don't know if you ever heard of Prince of Peace shows or, you know, no. uh, Holy Cross it. shows in Tom's River. Maybe you got some listeners and be like, oh, man, I was there. Because we were oh, in a band cool. called Through the Gray. Okay. So we were doing a lot of metal stuff. You know, there's also PLP Log Cabin in Manchester, right. I believe it was. Okay. All these old places. Uh, I mean, there's uh, there's also um, Face the Ocean we used to play with when I was in a band called As Luck Would Have It. Okay. So there's, yeah. So And those are all the people that we're looking back on and be like, hey, you still doing stuff? Oh, shit. Oh, you are? Why don't you come back and see? Yeah, we're trying to keep it, you know, trying to oh, rank gee. up that good karma, trying to rank up those favors, you know? Cause we're going to call, we're going to call in those favors later. Now, 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 so, okay. So they're actually, okay. I did not hear any of those bands. I'm going to listen yeah. to this slowly. <laughs> I'm going to check. Is that, is that, are these like metal bands, hair bands? What genre of rock is it? If you had, um, if you had a segment that, if you will. It's, oh boy. Oh. This is why I bring in Roger. He knows all the, all the sub genres, you know, he can oh, go on for okay. days. He's yeah. like, it's, it's probably a little bit of hardcore, a little bit of post-hardcore, yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bit of metal, Got you it. know, it's all in there. <laughs> well, so, so I'm, I'm old. I have 11 year old daughter and it's funny because, so she's getting into like emo music and one of her biggest bands is MCR, which is from Belden, New Jersey. There and, you go. Oh, yeah. and, and like, I wasn't super young when they came out, but I was younger. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had more hair before. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, I'm starting to see a trend of like the Gen Z discovering kind of our generation, probably a little older than you, but our generation yeah. music, which is pretty cool. So that's why I kind of like good tunes. You're you're introducing and right. reintroducing those types. What? Well, how do they, like? 
this is random, but <laughs> the Jersey band scene, if you remember, like the Jersey Shore, you go down to Belmar, there was like the nerds. Um, right, the nerds, yeah. Yeah, like there was like a four or five big bands. Like if you wanted to, um, show, I know, like, it, I I know, Nasbury, Daz and the Swagmatics are big yes. around there. Daz and the Swagmatics, they're awesome yeah. there. Yeah, but what's, but there's a lot of staples. Yeah, but what's interesting they're though great. is you'd be like, hey, I want like the nerds to play at my wedding because it's cool. Or right, they got like ten grand to show up. Like I was great. Like, <laughs> like I was like, what the? Like, what the? Anyway. Right, I oh man, but, I, yeah. I couldn't even imagine charging someone <laughs> for me to play. <laughs> you know, I never. Well, been it, it was so not. <laughs> so, so I'm guessing respect to the nerds and those. Yeah, I mean, hey, that, if it's working that, out, that they were a demand a good amount of money. I'm right. assuming they got whacked during COVID, right? So like, you know, because that's where they make their money is in person, bands. A lot of them were covers, so they don't have like the IP and stuff. Mm -hmm. So 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 you kind of have like those legacy ones. How about the people that now are starting bands or, or getting together, maybe guys they knew? Um, what, what are they doing? Are they doing SoundCloud? Are they doing YouTube? Are they doing even Instagram? What's a way to promote? Because Good Tunes is promoting some bands, which I love. But um, what if you're a newer artist, like, how do you get the word out there? Um, apparently, from what I've been learning, and it's a good thing that we're having those people who are still doing it because they're, yeah. they're in it. Like, I'm yeah. only just working on something and looking to release, so I'm in the learning stages. But it's all yeah. about Spotify playlists. Yeah. yeah. It's all about playlists. Get on those playlists. Talk to yeah. curators. Try and, you know, grease those elbows. Trying to get on their playlist. And I'm just like, whoa, that's a totally new game. And, like, everything you just named, SoundCloud and YouTube... I can, I get it. I get that. But then they're yeah. talking about Spotify and playlists and all these things. And I've done, I got tabs saved teaching me like oh, what curators, how to get to them and all that. I, um, I just submit, submit hub.com is like, yeah, a big thing. yeah. The yeah. CD baby, all this and that. I, I, exactly, I yeah. um, I, <laughs> I, I reluctantly, cause I'm a digital marketer, <laughs> right? And I could promote anything digitally. So mm -hmm. we took up some clients in the music space and, it was hard. I got to tell you. Yeah. And I have like an ecosystem that like, Hey, if you want some downloads or you want some listens and you want whatever, not, not, not hard in that sense. But when I got into the whole Spotify genre and I wanted to expand, uh, expand exposure on Spotify, I ran into, Hey, you need to be on these playlists. Right. So I'm like, all right, I'm an influential guy. I'm have a good client. There's stuff I can do for them. Let's work it. And a lot of these guys wanted to get paid. That's yeah. the, like, at least maybe because I'm a marketer, not a band person. But yeah. a lot of some of the ones that I went with, like, yeah, you can come on. Here's the fee. Here's this. Here's that. Here's this. And I was like, holy shit. And, and one thing I don't like, I don't know if you ran into this, but a lot of sites that you go to, like this is an example in the hip hop space. because I was doing a hip hop artist, too. You go to World Star Hip Hop, right? And you're like, hey, I'd love to get featured or love to get it on. I thought it was like YouTube. You get it up. And then if you want to get featured, you're paid. You got to pay like 2500 just to get on. So I found a lot of pay for play, like lurching around in the music space. And it sucks because they're kind of feeding off of up and comers who don't have a lot of resources, but are like hunger, hungry to get their word out there. So they kind of get caught up. So I like that you have an organic show that if somebody stumbles across it, they can they can get a new act. Um, you play any instruments, I hope, or what do you play? No, I'm uh, I'm I'm stuck waiting for musicians to be nice enough to let me sing on their music. Uh, okay, so you're so you so you're a singer then. You're a singer. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say because I was like I wasn't sure. Like again, Tim and I talked briefly, but I wasn't sure if you were a singer. Okay. So how I many? Tried band do, yeah. I tried, sorry, I was just gonna say I tried to do guitar when I was uh, in high school, but I. I didn't have the patience and I was just frustrated. I was like, screw this. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, so we established that you're a music aficionado, right? Now, right. have you sung, like, have you led in a band or just more been like, just kind of like messing around? No, we've released like EPs gone, you know, we've, uh, we've, uh, so you're downplaying uh, it. So you're downplaying it. We printed it. through disc makers, you know, we've made that <laughs> trip. <laughs> you know all about it. I love it. <laughs> you know, I love it. Did you um, have like a short residency anywhere or a local spot in Jersey that used to play, Asbury Park or whatever? Just more to curiosity. Uh, we played a lot. We played, oddly enough, we played like two shows at a t local TGI Fridays. We played yeah. at Wonder Bar in Asbury. Wonder Bar is you a know? good play. That's yeah, a good yeah. Play. yeah. I mean, like going, we've done like, you know, there's always some warp tour or bamboozle like uh contest to get on there. 
So through the years, you know, you gotta pay, you gotta sell the tickets and you gotta do round one, round two, round three, or the final final round. We played at Stone Pony. I played at Starland. Um, I mean, you name it, I probably played there. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't like a huge show. It was probably just like a battle of the bands, but still, oh. I played there, and it, you know, it's uh, you know, paying the dues is not is not so fun. Still waiting for it to pay off. <laughs> now, now, now you were mentioning that you are kind of reconnecting with some artists, right? That are like let's call them sake of argument colleagues of yours, right? Like kind of like yeah. been around a little longer in the tooth like me, um, mm -hmm. but you're also dealing with some of the newer up and coming bands that might be a little younger. What are some of the difference between the older music, if you will, and the newer music in terms of style, cadence, et cetera, what differences do you see or if any, none? Well, now you're getting the resurgence of punk rock thanks to MGK. Yeah. So, but the fear of the old people like you and I, we're, we don't want, we don't want the kids these days to think MGK created that. Yeah. Like he started it, you know? Yes. <laughs> I don't want to be like, hey, back in, you know, that actually <laughs> thing. I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> Get off my lawn and stuff. But, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, we don't want it, the wrong message, you know? But like you said, they're going yeah. back to MCR. They're, they yeah. are going back, you know, by yeah. the help of us. You know, oh, that's my dad playing that lame music. Hey, wait a minute. That's something uh, that MGK listens to. Oh, maybe it's not so bad. You know, what, what sucks, <laughs> though, what sucks, though, is you're actually noble. Like, I could play whatever and it could be oh, okay. good and she'll listen to the opposite. Because I if I listen, like if I listen to it, I would ruin it. <laughs> she's 11. You know what I mean? It's like one of those. Right, right, that, right. Like, maybe she's older. She'll be nostalgic. And I don't know, maybe like you two or Frank Sinatra or something. Who the fuck knows? But. <laughs> You never know. So, hey, you never okay. know, man. I'm still listening to Billy Joel sometimes. You know, you I, never I, know when you just gotta feel I, it. I uh, love Billy Joel to this day. I'm like kind of standing because he played that long kind of residency <laughs> at MSG, and I just you know just didn't go. So a few times oh, before, no. but yeah, I should have went. Uh, so so now post, you know, we're kind of getting. Well, we'll say we're getting out of COVID because all, all I know is I'll say this. Then don't jinx it, man. Oh, then a fourth <laughs> wave. New Jersey pod yeah. uh, podcaster causes fourth wave, right? <laughs> But but with that being said, though, um, we are hopefully vaccinated, all that kind of fun stuff. How does a you know how does a scene reemerge? Is it smaller shows, maybe streaming on social platforms? Because I'm not super going to go to the Wonder Bar tomorrow and like you know like 500 people like mosh pit and you know not that I probably would anyway. But yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like how does a yeah. reemergence of the real music scene? work past post pandemic in your opinion i mean it depends on how desperate you are to play and how desperate you are to get out there and listen Good and th those people will come out if there's 50 percent or 75 percent or standing in groups separated yeah. you know they'll go out because they're like i just need to i don't care yeah, yeah you know and then as and then those people who are a little bit more i don't want to say scared because you know whatever um who are a little bit more hesitant uh as those things increase, like oh, okay, it's safer, safer, safer. You know, they'll they'll and fill the gas, fill the gas. Like, yeah, I think I think people are underestimating how much people just want to get the f out of the house. You know, well, I think I think like again. I think like if you see in Florida, right? So as the time of this, we're gonna, go. and we're live the tapes, we're gonna put up tonight. But but as of this this conversation in Florida, the, the pendulum swung so far the other way. They had to put a curfew. People were partying, twerking on cars going nuts and i know jersey's a little bit of a different jam so i kind of see it going one of both ways and tell me where you think it'll go i think when things are done i think the young people don't give a shit i think yeah. asbury park's packed again seaside's packed wherever the younger young whippersnappers go right i, I probably would have felt the same if that was their age <laughs> yeah <laughs> nothing and, could ever kill me <laughs> exactly and let's be honest, that, 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 that is somewhat not that i'm not gonna too political that, that is somehow supports where if you're 22 now we're not talking about protecting Nona, Nona, but I'm talking about yeah, you yeah. Know, or Nana, whatever you come from. I, I'll get protecting the older and the immunocompromised. But if you're generally younger, you're gonna probably be okay, right? So I envision the scene kind of coming pretty hard. I envision the scene going back, but also I'm like thinking as like a a, a business owner, right? Like so, I have like a band come, and it's November, and like we're kind of the tail end, or COVID's kind of stamped out. Do I want a pack bar? Like, do I want that? God forbid that one person walks in and causes like a mini outbreak. Like, my, like, do you think oh, only, yeah, yeah. even post pandemic, 
may limit the capacity just because like, I don't know, I'll be honest with you, with you Tim. Uh, November this year, I got the vaccine with my fiance. She's younger, but she's got the vaccine. We're in Asbury Park for date night. We're staying over. We go to a band and there's a thousand people. I don't know if I'm there. I'd be honest. I, I got to get there. Maybe not there yet. But do you think owners will be proactive and say, you know, maybe limit it themselves because they're worried about outbreaks or worried about liability? Or you just think once this is over, it's going to be sex, drugs, and rock and roll? I'd love to hear your opinion. Um, yeah, yeah I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah, when it comes down, it comes down to the pocket. It comes down to your whether you can keep your place open because you're, True. you know, you're a. Uh, like you're saying, a bunch of, you're an infest, infestation hotspot or something like that. You yeah. know, I mean, I don't know how that. Do you have any insight on how insurance is going to handle that or is, is going to well, liability? Well, so, so, stuff, so, so what happened? So what happened was the little I know, because I do own another business, is there is not legal protection per se that if your employee gets it or somebody walks in and gets it. And I think there's a little lobbying with the attorney associations that they got in and blunted that bill. Not that there's been any large, large scale lawsuits yet but i just don't trust any you know like i just you, you know i just don't trust anybody and then the other part too is like do you contact trace meaning like yeah. do you have a concert at the wonder bar or whatever you say hey you're gonna have a thousand people come you maybe check for whatever and then maybe you know like when you just go to djs back in the day they had a little card thing and it took a picture of your license and you went in the database Maybe you contact Trace. I don't see that's what I'm saying. I'm super fascinated to see how people react. So I, I do marketing, as you know, right. and I was reading that a lot of the ads already are like super sexy. They're <laughs> over the top and they're predicting kind of like a roaring 20s and a sick and like the 60s of just like a new sexual revolution, pent up demand. The wow. ads are going to be sexy. The parties are going to be sexy. And again, it's going to be sex, drugs and rock and roll. And like I. I understand that conceptually mm -hmm. but and maybe miami is like a kind of a lead-in but i don't know mm -hmm. you know what are your thoughts uh i mean wh when did they stop advertising sexiness <laughs> you well, know is that so new? There, was that, there was that there was that um was it i think it's a gene ad that came out and and put a comment okay. below if you can remember it's super recent i'm talking like last week and it was like all like naked people like laying on the bed and like it was like and they were oh, wow. kissing they were kissing they were kissing, and like I didn't think anything, I'm I'm older but I didn't think anything wrong was it yeah I'm not that old right yeah <laughs> you know? and as a marketer it was it was a little edgy you know it was a little right, edgy right and um and uh, they got like lambasted it got like they got really beat up and like this is yeah. too much blah blah and like here's the thing like so we 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 and I won't say the client name but we presented something to, to a client that was, you know, now, and I'm not going to lie. It was a little sexy and I don't blame, I'm going to say him or her. So you can't triangulate, but he was like, that's a little insensitive nowadays. There's people like, you know, passing, they're dying, they're sick. And you're worried about like having like a hot, uh, and hot guy out there, but here's uh, my, here was our take. People need a respite away from this. People that like, you, what, what is that movie? Shawshank, get, either get busy living or you get busy dying. <laughs> like, for those that make it, you know, for those that pass, we have to be sensitive. Those that are compromised, we need to protect. But yeah. we also are going to live. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, that's why I'm like, I was super excited to have you on and talk about a little bit about the music scene, especially in New Jersey. So I'd like to see how it pans out. Now, what are some of the things you're working on in your upcoming shows? So we, we'll, we'll put um, the link to your YouTube channel. And we'll probably do, probably easier to do the latest episode because when you go to a channel, people have ADD, they see all this shit, they don't uh, click. So we'll probably <laughs> right. put your latest show. But what's so what, what talk us about up some upcoming shows that you have in the queue? So when we take a break from interviewing people and talking about new music we've discovered, we talk about our old music. It's kind of just a nostalgia trip. It's yeah. kind of just a hey, uh, no one bought or listened to our music back in the day and. Let's see if we can shove it in your face again. <laughs> Seriously, I've got hundreds of of wrapped CDs that still unsold from like ten years ago. My band when my it. interview when my guests come on, I'm just like, take this, please. Just take I this. love it. <laughs> I, don't, I, 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 I have books, so I'm with you. My you have books. I have, I, yeah. I mean, you have CDs. I have books, and uh, I. I <laughs> categorically relate to that. So it's basically just a jam session. You and and Roger Y. Have a jam session. You have some cool dudes on. You guys Stupid are stories, in, you know. You guys are in a, a, a garage. 
when this nonsense clears up, I'd love to come out. I have no skill to offer you other than be like the, <laughs> the old chubby guy in the corner. But but I would love to. I would love Woo! to. <laughs> so how can we find you? So for those listening, we're going to put a link, and those watching, we're going to put a link. But okay. those that are truly audio, how can we find you, Tim? Uh, we post our Good Tunes Pos- podcast through our Idiot Box YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, on Instagram, we're at Idiot Box NJ for New Jersey. Idiot Box NJ. My personal one is Timmy Good Tunes, and Rogers is at Roger Y W U Y. Nice. And uh, that's it. My band Wake Up Paradise is coming out with some new music at Wake Up Paradise for Instagram. I love so it. So hopefully we'll have some new music. Now I'm done talking about my old music, and maybe we can talk about some new music yeah, coming out. So. And then in 10 years, <laughs> when the show's still going, you could pitch the old music to the new people. Never <laughs> give up hope. Never, ever, ever. <laughs> Tim, lo- love the vibes. Tim kind of came on last minute, so thank you for coming on. So please check out his YouTube channel. Check out like comment and subscribe and tim thank you for being on the new theory podcast thank you so much i appreciate it